Hey everybody, it's the start of the football season, kind of officially, if you call practice the start of it. Um, and that's cool. Jimmy and I are going to talk about that. We're also going to, it's the start of the season, you know, because uh, Athlon comes out with this, their anonymous sources say this or say that about various teams in the SEC. Some of them are kind of funny. And uh, so we want to talk about that too, because Jimmy and I like fun stuff. Why not? Let's do it. All right, come join us. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back in to Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? Good, good over in Mississippi. And, uh, man, this is a fun day. I hate that uh, the, me the media is not allowed into practice. That's a big bummer. But it's still the first day of practice. And I, I, it's such a big deal to me, Luke. I can even recall previous first days of practice and where I was and how excited I was. And, uh, yeah, it all gets started today. Yeah, and, and I feel like this thing really gets going downhill after today. First of all, I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen. Secondly, I want to thank Bet Online for being the title sponsor for this particular podcast. Uh, and if you don't believe me, how about this? Pow! There's my Bet Online thing. I don't know if that convinced anybody that they were still our sponsor, but they are. Um, we also put the LinkedIn sponsor up there because LinkedIn is also a key sponsor. We appreciate them very much. Um, Jimmy, I, I got to start talking about this. Uh, it's just kind of funny to me. Every year, the Athlons comes out with their uh, anonymous sources say, I don't even know what they call the, what they even call the, the, the I know it's in their issue there, but I don't know what they call the segment or whatever. Um, and I had to look up a few of these, and, and we won't spend a lot of time. So let, let's talk about Alabama's first. Since this is Alabama podcast. Um, let me scroll down to it. I mean, they probably just say, hey, anonymously, they're pretty good. Also, very openly, they're very good. Now, they say um, Nick Saban loves a losing year, even in the national title, because it kills whatever assumption that current group might have about their value. He's a genius because he can reduce all that success from last season into a lesson about failure, and they'll have to buy into the work ethic. It's amazing. Okay, first of all, Nick Saban doesn't love a losing year, and he hadn't had any. So let's go ahead and get that out. I guess it's he, a losing year when there's not the big trophy hoisted at the end. It's a losing season for Nick Saban <laughs> when the big trophy isn't hoisted at the end. You know, I was on Locked On Sports yesterday because of the Saban's quote of, hey, last year was a rebuilding year, apparently rubbed some people the wrong way because everything he says rubs somebody the wrong way. And I was like, guys, it was a rebuilding year. Now – in the moment, it probably didn't seem that way. But now, in hindsight, we can say, oh, that kind of was a rebuilding year. Not only did we lose all this talent to the draft off a phenomenal, historical, maybe the best team ever 2020 squad, um, you know, we're st and we're starting over with a brand new quarterback who's immensely talented. Nobody's debating that, but he hadn't started yet. Uh, we, we lost our Najee Harris. We replaced him with Brian Robinson, who, like I told them, had 400 and some odd yards rushing in high school in one game one time. So that's not a lot of running backs can do that, but he's not Najee Harris. Uh, we Our uh, wide receivers were great, and I love Jameson Williams. I love John Mechie, but who's going to take those two guys over Waddle and Devontae Smith, all things remaining equal? Not many people. So, again, I'm not saying that – Alabama was just left with rags. They had some really good dudes. They're always going to have good dudes. But relative to Alabama, last year was a rebuilding season, and Saban is correct once again. Yeah, uh, I think I think one way that he also meant that to, to me, I mean, one way to take it is I think people focus on that rebuilding term, and as, as that that's the headline, right? But I, I think what he meant was, Look, there was a bunch of new guys, and we didn't know how they were going to play. We didn't know, you know, the, the, even the transfer, like Jameson Williams or Henry Toho Toho. And we had a lot of new guys in new roles. So it was rebuilding, and we thought that, that, that you know, it, it, it ended up being more successful in terms on the field of what we thought it would be. But we thought, and since they were all new guys, a lot of them would be back this year. But that's not the case. Uh, still lost seven guys to the draft, almost all 
could have returned to this team, but they had so much success on the field last year that they left. Uh, so we're supposed to be a more experienced team this year, but but we're really not because so many of, of last season's you know guys left. So I think he meant that as well as just the general term of, hey, last year was a bit of a surprise to us in terms of getting Indianapolis. It wasn't really expected. Uh, but, you know, another way to look at also this, Luke, we almost lost Florida. Almost yeah. lost to Auburn. Almost, didn't play well at all versus LSU. Sort of almost lost that game. I mean, Arkansas r- racked up a million Tennessee. yards on us. Tennessee. Tennessee was tight for three full quarters. Um, so, you know, Alabama in, in so many ways was fortunate last year. Although I do get the feeling when Nick Saban says, well, last year was a rebuilding year. That's sort of then the unspoken thing is, uh, oh, this year we're built. This year, yeah. but we're not rebuilding. This is a built team. We're built. Yeah, so, that's, and exactly. And see, that's what I was trying to tell these folks, because honestly, I think the national side of it and we don't because I mean, we're in Alabama, we don't get the national side as much or even uh, the the you know, from where these guys are calling me from, I think it was from Ohio, is much different than anywhere in the South even. Um, and again, what Saban is saying is, hey, we don't use, we usually have two or three close games a year. We had several close games. And some of them that on the scoreboard may not look as close like the Tennessee game. It was close, dang it. Um, and now the other thing I'd say about that is, okay, if you look at our record from last year and it was – I guess it was 12 and two. Was that it? Were we 12 and two last year? Is that where we were? Or 12 and 13 and two? 13, 13. and two. 13 okay. and two. So we're 13 and two. And, you know, the the one thing, see, when we're rebuilding, we're still going to get those close wins. Most rebuilding teams would lose that game to Auburn, would lose that game to LSU, would lose that game uh, to, to Tennessee or Arkansas or whatever. And see, that tells you about, how good things are at Alabama. Like we're down on the fact that we beat our our most hated rival at their place when we were down seven points with just a scant amount of time left. And it f- still feels like to this minute that it was almost like a loss. And the Auburn fans treat it like a win. That's how good we've been. So when we look back on this, we'll go, geez, even when we – you know, one really close games, other teams were like, hey, we were right there with you. But but the difference is we know how to win those close games consistently. And that's why Nick Saban is Nick Saban. So, Jimmy, let me let me tell everybody really quickly about Bet Online. God, this segment went by fast and um we had a lot of minutes involved. I didn't know that. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one source for odds, lines, and games. That's BetOnline.net. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, podcasts, whatever you want. They got you covered over there to the BetOnline.net. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, Jimmy, now, we weren't going to do this. We, we're calling an audible. I, I'm having so much fun reading these anonymous. Yeah. And one thing, though, one thing I want to throw in, though, about the rebuilding, we, we, we revise history. That's what sports fans do. And I think that's what people do. They, they, they forget and move on because things seem so dumb in retrospect. People forget. But One year ago today, Luke, one year ago, you could go to any of the big message boards that cover that that, that talk about Alabama football all day, Alabama fans. And it wasn't overwhelming, but there was discussion on every board. There was at least a handful of people that said Paul Tyson would beat out Bryce Young. They they didn't believe in Bryce based on how he performed as a freshman. And and, and I, I don't know how they gleaned that, but nevertheless. But no, but there, there was talk of that. And I just mention it because it's like there wasn't a lot of reason to really think that Alabama would, would make it all the way to Indianapolis, you know, at the start of last season. Uh, so in that sense, it was a rebuilding year. But yet there was one year ago, there were, there were definitely people in the Paul Tyson camp. I'm sure they all deny it now, but they were. And let me say this, too. Uh, today, Danny Cannell and Nicole Arbach were on um, Sirius XM, you know, the 
first team or whatever the heck it's called. I can't remember. Opening drive, whatever it is. That, that, that's a number, another show it seems like, but whatever. And they kept saying about how, um, you know, first of all, they were talking about Paige. Is it Paige Brackers or Buckner? whatever? It is. Huh? Buckner. Maybe it's Buckner's. I don't know. Whatever. Who The one at, at UConn who's a really good player. I mean, I've seen her play. I just don't keep up with UConn basketball. Forgive me. Um, and she tore her ACL. And they went on and on about how, you know, isn't college basketball on the women's side so much better because it's, it's a, so unpredictable now? And my first thought was, yeah, in a way. But, see, if you don't have UConn being as good as they were for so long, probably not as many people are still caring about women's basketball. UConn lifted the whole thing up and then other people got better because that's what you should do. That's how it should grow. And um, so I thought about that. And then they said, you know, and that's what I worry about with college football because every year we can always just pencil in Alabama and pencil in Ohio state and pencil in Georgia and, and, you know, whoever else or Oklahoma and Clemson. And I said, well, first of all, Oklahoma and Clemson didn't make it last year. Ohio state didn't make it last year. Um, and secondly, you could have penciled out in Alabama and you would have been right, but there were about five games in there where it was dicey. I mean, they lost at A&M, so why couldn't they? You know, uh, uh, Auburn could have beaten them. Arkansas could have beaten them. It's not that – give Alabama more credit than this. They're not just showing up and beating everybody, like, with no preparation. Give us some credit, dude. Don't act like we show up and get all all the calls, get all everything, when that's not the way it is. This Alabama, It's not just having the most talent. It's having the most preparation and having the most drive and having the most um, – the, the best schedule in terms of off-season prep. The, it's, it's all of that. So it just – it bothers me because everybody says, I'm tired of just seeing the same three teams. Instead of bringing us down, lift yourself up. Don't, you know, don't don't call somebody else fat so you feel better about yourself. Why don't you go lift a weight? <laughs> okay. Hey, and um, also at this point, on, on that point, which is a great one, how about this? It, it, you know, I, I can't remember where I read this, but, but someone projected, uh, uh, an organization projected that the four playoff teams would be, and they made a point of, here we go again, but the four playoff teams will be, as in, duh, you know, duh, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, Ohio State, okay? And, and and I think that's the four teams you most often see right now projected, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson, okay? But here here's the thing. The, the same publication made the same point. Those four teams have never made the playoff in the same year before. There's yeah. never been an Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, Ohio State playoff. There just has mm-hmm. not been. So – Yes, it seems like it's the same teams. And, yes, Alabama's made it a lot. And Ohio State's made it a lot. And Clemson's been there a few times, too, and we've seen Georgia a couple times. But it, it, it's not literally the same four people. And for all the people going, gosh, Alabama wins it every year, Tua, Tua to Smitty was now like four or five seasons ago. 2018, Alabama did not win the national championship. 2019, Alabama did not make the playoff. 2020, they did. But Alabama also did not win the national championship in 2021. So Alabama has has only won one of the last four. That's not outrageous. No. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and take another break because I want to get in. Like I don't want to stop myself from some of these other anonymous quotes. Yeah. And uh, we will talk about practice more. There's look. There's not a ton that's gonna. Ha- there may be something that happens. We're recording this early and like I may look like a fool, but typically nothing's going to big is going to go down. So we'll talk about that more soon. Um, let's take a break. When we come back, I want some more anonymous quotes about other SEC teams. OK, so, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the one about Auburn. Um, and this is first of all, it's a terrible quote just the way it's it's started. And it sounds like something a football coach would say. That's how I know it's genuine. Um, this is anonymous coach to Athlon Sports on Auburn. Quote, as far as the football, they need a quarterback. What else would we be talking about? What do you mean as far as the football? Of course. Now, we want to know your thoughts on Auburn's engineering program, anonymous <laughs> coach. But anyway, I, I, that, I couldn't get over that. As far as the football, which makes no sense anyway, what do you did you just get here from another country and learn our language? Who says that? 
as far as the football, they need a quarterback. They need a much better offensive line. They need to replace a ton of guys in the secondary and receiving core. And they've bled a lot of Gus Malzahn's guys in the portal because all the of the off the field stuff. Is it a lost cause? Maybe not. They're creative on offense. That may be the biggest backhanded kind of compliment, but really an insult that's ever been said in the history of mankind and said poorly, by the way. Auburn is a, a dumpster fire right now. The recruiting is the recruiting is just, I mean, I, I, I you know, it's hard to be objective. You know, I think when you're, when you're a, a person that cares as much about Auburn as, as we care about Alabama, uh, I'm sure it's hard to be objective with what they got going on, but re- recruiting is, a, I mean, from one to 10, it, it is a zero. It's not even a one to 10. I mean, it, their recruiting is a complete disaster. I don't lay all of the blame at Brian Harson's feet uh, because of, of what happened this summer. It'll be interesting to see what happens on the field. To some extent, I think I'm not giving Auburn enough credit in terms of the, the dudes they're putting on the field because they probably have more I'm not giving enough credit to kids like Colby Wooden, you know, who's a good player. And, and you know, they have others. And Popo will be back. And, of course, Tank Bigsby's a freaking badass. Derek Hill is a really I – mean, oh. Derek Hall. Hall. Yeah, Derek Hall. He is a really good football player. I mean, that, that dude – I mean, if, if we're going to – you know, I don't, I don't mind trading a few of our backup linemen. Let's, let's, let's send six linemen over there and get Derek, Derek Hall. He, he's really good. So, they have a handful of guys, but – I don't see Auburn winning a game against an SEC West opponent. I, I just don't. I mean, I, I mean, who's who's the worst team in the West if it's not Auburn? I guess it's Mississippi State. But can they score with Mississippi State? I mean, with Will Rogers and and improves a state team that returns more starters than anybody in the whole league. And, and in year three, all of Leach's teams have been pretty good. They were at Texas Tech and Washington State. And I'm not saying that Mississippi State's going to be nine and three. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying I think they're going to beat Auburn. Well, you know, uh, the guys that I do a local sports show with, they're, they're mostly Auburn fans, and, and they were all upset about Auburn being picked last. I said, "Well, who are you picking last?" Then? I said, "You know, I understand. I get it. I wouldn't want to be picked last. I mean, Alabama's been picked last. I didn't like it. Didn't want it. And I kept thinking, God, those guys are a bunch of idiots. But if you looked at this objectively," Who are you going to pick last? You're going to pick Arkansas last? I mean, they bring back KJ Jefferson. They they look like they're on the upward tick. You're going to pick yeah, LSU? Yeah. They're arguably the third most talented team in this conference. Period. Yeah. And they've got a coach who's been to the playoffs. Yeah, they, they um, finally have a good. Co- I mean, I, I, you know, Ed Ogeron was good at what he did, I guess. But Brian Kelly is an infinite improvement over Ed Ogeron right. as a as a, as a head football coach. He's a a huge improvement question about that you're going to put- here's another point about Auburn to make and it's just occurred to me you know I, I think Texas A&M's who I picked finish second in the West that, that's who I pick I can make a case Luke that everyone in the West can finish second to Alabama I can make a case for state I can make a case for Ole Miss and their offense and their portal guys like Zach Evans were outstanding Arkansas A&M even a Brian Kelly led LSU I can make a case for all of them finishing second in the West I ain't making a case for Auburn Finishing fifth. I mean, uh, th- that's that's my, uh, my my point is like who like in like you said. I mean, who who are you who are you picking Auburn to beat? They may beat Missouri, but they're not going to beat Georgia. So that's one and seven in the league, and and again, I I, I lay very little of this at Harson's feet. If, if if they didn't have that coup, Harson may have signed six or eight guys in the portal, and now they can compete. But because they're not dead broke. They're not Vanderbilt. They're just not good enough to beat the other teams in the West. It it seems like, you know, Auburn's been one of those schools that they've always overachieved. I mean, I give them a ton of credit. They've always overachieved. I mean, they've got, you know, the big bad boy on the block in Alabama in their state. They got Georgia that they, you know, essentially share a state with, uh, kind of, sort of. Um, they play in the toughest conference uh, in the toughest region. They've got a lot of things going against them. Now, they got some things going for them, don't get me wrong, but uh, they've always overachieved. They've always been sort of swimming upstream, but they've always done a dang good job of it. Um, this year, it feels like the rushing waters may get a hold of them because you look at the last couple of years of re- recruiting rankings, uh, they're, they're in, that, in the late teens, 
early 20s versus being, you know, in the close to the top 10 or right at the top 10. This year, I'm looking at something like, and I know this doesn't have anything to do with this particular season's production, but you look at Stanton Rammel just committing to Michigan State from Thompson. That's a guy Auburn's got to get. Connor Liu is another offensive lineman that Auburn's really looking at. Um, it looked like they were going to get him. I mean, for all the world, all the moderators felt like they'd get him. Georgia felt good about him, and now it looks like he's going to the Hurricanes, Miami Hurricanes, and even some of the Auburn moderators have said that. Again, it's this year, even if Auburn were to finish middle of the pack in SEC West, which I think would be a dang good year, given the schedule, which is either the first or, or second toughest schedule in the country, and, and given their roster, it's next year that's going to be a real problem because – Alabama's not going anywhere. Texas A&M's only going to get better. LSU's going to be better. Georgia's still going to be Georgia. And meanwhile, um, your your roster now is going to be made up of a Tank Bigsby less, Derek Hall less, Kobe Wooden less, the new offensive line. I mean, it, that's the thing I keep hearing from Auburn fans. At least our offensive line is experienced, but that experience leaves next year. Uh, your, your quarterback situation probably won't be any more resolved than it is right now. Um, I, again, I'm not trying to paint the bleakest picture in the world. I'm just saying that I think I feel like some people are whistling past the graveyard. The whole reason we talked about this is because of these anonymous quotes, and now we've run out of time again. Um, but we'll just leave it at that. I just I, I find these anonymous quotes funny because um, and some people will say. And by the way, let me just read 24/7's take to to be fair. It says, coming out of the tumultuous month of February, Brian Harson and the Tigers made it out of spring alive. But the main question is this. Who is a believer in Auburn right now as a contender in the SEC West? Well, Harson will pick either Zach Calzada, a transfer of Maine, and or TJ Finley as their starter, and the offense will go through uh, returning playmaker Tank Bixby out of the backfield. From there, the Tigers are a bit of a mystery. And, again, that's all I'm saying. This isn't just me just raining crap down on Auburn. I'm saying is if, if you're a diehard Auburn fan, you know who Colby Wooden is. If you're an Alabama fan like you and me, you know who Colby Wooden is. The national guys don't know him quite as much. Now, maybe he makes his name known this year because he's a good player. But on the offensive line, who who would you want from the offensive line to replace somebody on AM's line or LSU's line? Forget Alabama and Georgia or Mississippi State's line. You know? That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's it's they they don't they don't appear to have the dudes that the rest of the West has. And I think it's going to be a long year, plus the schedule's tough. Like you said, I mean, they, 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 they get Georgia every year. <laughs> and so you play a really tough West, and then you get Georgia. And then non-conference-wise, they play a Penn State team that's probably to some level a contender in the Big Ten to some level. Uh, I think that Penn State game will mean a lot. I mean, I, I'm I'm so bleak. I, I, see, I, I think it's so bleak for Auburn. I see them losing that game like 28-7. Wow. If they if they win it, if they win it, or even lose 23-22, now I'm looking at Auburn completely differently like I have the entire offseason, and I admit it. And last year, they played Penn State closer than I assumed that game would go. So, uh, But last year, I thought they were a better team. So we'll see. I'm going to say this. Uh, this may make me sound stupid. This I may <laughs> – I, I hate saying it. I think Auburn beats Penn State. I – I don't want it to be true. I really think they do. I, I just do. Maybe I'm too close. I'm flying too close. I think I'm. Too, close to the I, I, think I'm I, I think I'm too much on that. They're going to be terrible. They're going to be terrible, and they're going to prove me wrong. I, I can see that coming. But no, that's literally how I feel. Is Penn State twenty eight seven? I think it, I, I'll tell you this. It wouldn't shock me if Auburn beats Penn State, and it's, and like they have this euphoric moment, and then they lose to LSU and lose to Missouri. That would not shock me. I'm tell that's how weird I think Auburn is this year. <laughs> we'll so, see. Um, okay, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate all of you, even the Auburn fans that will certainly send us some hate mail. We understand um, this part of the gig. They so shouldn't uh, They shouldn't be listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't want to do that. Isn't that what uh, David Alvin did that time? He's like, you Alabama fans, go somewhere and drink a beer and let us talk. <laughs> you can, you're welcome to listen. They are, and I'm, I'm trying to literally be objective, and not, and this is what I think Auburn ought to do. Uh, I, you know, my advice is give Harson this money that he deserves for enduring what he's had to endure, and then get the same coup people together and, and, and get them to pull their money again, 
and go make an uh, an elite hire that that Auburn's fans deserve. An elite hire. That, and I'm not saying Brian Horson's a, an idiot. What I'm saying is, go hire somebody that everyone at Auburn is excited about. That everyone is on the same page. That every single Auburn fan is like, yes, this is a guy we can win with. Go. Let that's what you have to do. Here's one other thing to say about Brian Arson, because I kind of feel sorry for him. Um, because, man, when you make up accusations like what they made up about him, somebody made them up. I don't know who. I don't know what booster. You know, people have their own theories. Somebody made them up. When you're a married man and you have to, you know, you deal with the 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 BS, the minutia every day of being a coach in the SEC. You come off a losing record. Yeah, and you're faced with all this criticism in the media and the Alabama fans, the Georgia fans are making fun of you. And your own fans are like, we don't know if you're the right guy. You're too Boise for us. And then somebody puts out this accusation about you and this young woman. And you got to go home and listen to that from your wife initially. Like, I would be mad, too, if I were her. I mean, I'd be like, what is this all about? I mean, that dude's been through the ringer. I mean, he certainly has been uh, battle tested. So he hasn't uh, been given a fair shot. He was never given a fair shot. And, and, oh, I'm, not, I, and I'm not my prediction, by the way. I'm a, I think if he was given a fair shot, I, I don't know that it would have worked. Just agree. I don't know that it would have worked. If, if but but he wasn't even given a fair shot. And, agree. And that's a guy that needed it. You know. Now, so here's the thing: if if Bruce Pearl, as successful he's been at Auburn, if he had had to endure some of these same things. He wouldn't have been successful. Like Nick Saban couldn't have been successful in this environment. So it's a lost cause. And so my, uh, unless he pulls off some kind of Gene Chizik moment, which we all think cannot happen. So anyway, I just – that's my thing. Brian Harson, this, this, all these accusations and all this that he went through, while it had to be awful, in the end may save him in terms of getting him another job because everybody can be like, we're going to write off that Auburn thing. That was weird. So we're just going to take that off your resume. Instead, what if he didn't have that and he has another losing record this year? Then he might be untouchable because people would be like, you went to Auburn and had two straight losing seasons. That's tough. with Tank Bigsby and Derek Hall. That's tough to do. So anyway, all right, Jimmy, thank you, buddy. We went too long today. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, we'll try and keep it shorter next time. Y'all have a good one and roll time. Roll time.